Let me start with Mr. Shostak. Uh, you've been in this business for long enough to experience firsthand the benefits of a business environment that supports manufacturing. You said in your testimony that American policies welcomed Honda's investment and made it possible to begin U.S. production in 1979. And as your company, I think, is now approaching 40 years in the United States, what is at stake with the prospect of tariffs on U.S. imports of autos and auto parts? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, we came to the United States because we wanted to build product uh, where we were going to sell product, and we found a welcoming environment and grew our footprint step by step, including building powertrain, engines, transmissions, and full-line R&Ds happening right here in the United States. The problem with the tariffs is tariffs are taxes, and tariffs are going to increase the cost of manufacturing, which is then going to increase prices to consumers, demand will fall, and this as I and the other witnesses have said this morning, will ripple, through the, will ripple through the entire economy. Tariffs disrupt and distort the market and are going to divert resources that we need to invest in new technologies going forward and undermine the stability of that welcoming environment that we first found. So we see it, sir, as, as quite a threat. You know, there's 14 auto companies producing cars in the U.S. Together we all have healthy competition. The auto industry is not in need of protective tariffs, and they could destabilize the industry, as you've heard this morning. Well, thank you. Mr. Gates, uh, you, uh, you witness daily the joy and, and often the stress that a company is purchasing a vehicle. A car is one of the largest investments that a family can make or a consumer will make. And as you said, one of the most important considerations for your customers is price. Uh, what impact would auto tariffs have on your consumers? Well, I'm afraid you can that... About, you can talk about consumers across the nation. The, well, I'm afraid that uh, I think I cited some research that perhaps, uh, uh, you know, perhaps two million cars, uh, the, we would sell uh, two, two million cars less. I think it's greater than that. <laughs> the, I know just from my own experience, cars are very price sensitive. It's all about payment. If cars rose an average of four to six thousand dollars, the that adds the four thousand dollars adds eighty dollars a month to a payment. Everybody that buys a car cares about the payment. The uh, so to me, and again this probably goes against some of the research, but to me I think it's I think it's devastating. I don't think that I can survive long term if this occurs. Well, thank you. I, I'm in agreement with you guys, I'll tell you. Uh, Mr. Hawley, let me go to you. Uh, you and your fellow witnesses have reminded us today that the automotive supply chain is both dynamic and fragile. One small change can set off a domino effect ultimately hurting consumers and the economy. As you noted in your testimony, the supplier industry has already felt the effects of steel and aluminum tariffs. Now, these tariffs are costing your company alone $10 million a year. What will the impact of additional tariffs be on your business as well as the entire supply chain? Uh, Senator, uh, it, it has had a big impact. It's obviously, you know, we've started delaying our growth, okay, and that's uh, a, a big problem for us. The, the imp we do not import a lot ourselves. Uh, uh, we, we manufacture everything in the country where we use it, uh, but the big effect uh, is going to be just if the overall volumes uh, of the industry go down, we're selling parts for cars that may be supported by imported uh, uh, components. And uh, uh, we've had one layoff in the history of the company back in 2009. And if, you know, volumes go down, that's where we become very susceptible uh, uh, to, you know, uh, our, our team members. Well, Mr. Brett, uh, uh, several witnesses described today the auto industry is highly integrated and automakers create a great deal of opportunity in the communities in which they operate. How dependent is your community on the health of the automotive industry? Mr. Chairman, um, I mentioned the 25 years that we've had of growth you know, since BMW first announced in 1992. It's still fresh on every citizen in Spartanburg, and I think in South Carolina's mind, 
when the textile industry collapsed, all those jobs that were lost. Um, I think it's, you know, it's very important to realize in South Carolina, we're still tied in very carefully to what's going on the automotive side, you know, as the dealers have already spoken to that. But with BMW being such an impact on, on Spartanburg and South Carolina, it's not just the employees at BMW, the 10,000 employees there. Um, as Mr. Gates mentioned, very few parts are made by BMW that goes into their vehicle, or a Honda, or a Toyota, or whatever. In fact, BMW only makes the engine for the most part. So all those other components are made by the supplier network. And a lot of them are in South Carolina, but there's still a lot of those products, the products that come in from you know, the international companies. In Spartanburg, if BMW can't sell the number of vehicles that they have done in the previous year, and every BMW is sold before it's made. Those 1,450 vehicles are being made today are already sold. So if they cut back, for instance, we don't need 450,000 this year, we need 350,000. So they cut 100,000 cars out. That means a 20% to 25% reduction in their potential workforce, as well as all the 66,000 that are across South Carolina. Uh, take, for instance, Magna Seating. They produce seats for BMW. They have, when they came to Spartanburg, they've had two expansions since their first announcement three years ago. They, put, they make four seats for every BMW that's made. So they make the X cars in Spartanburg, the SUVs. So if they don't need 100,000 vehicles next year at BMW, that means there are 400,000 seats at Magna. Then the, all the other uh, producers, ZF Limford or Draxel Meyer, all the others that support the BMW production, they cut back. But it's not just even the auto suppliers. It is the golf cart or the golf cart sales group in Spartanburg on Highway 221. It stopped me recently. I wanted to thank our team, our council, and our economic development team for this growth that we've experienced. That $17 billion. They've doubled the size of their shop their workforce, and have moved into a new facility all because of this growth. And if that growth goes backwards, they have to cut back. They have to lay off. Then they've got to face paying their bills for this new building. This ripples all across Spartanburg and South Carolina, and it is very, very serious and very dangerous.